The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, we make videos about health and healthcare topics and all our videos are directly referenced from the internationally accepted US National Medical Library so you can trust the information. Today we are going to talk about preeclampsia, high blood pressure in pregnancy. Why it happens, how it happens, what are the causes, what should you do, what is the treatment and what you need to know about it, right? It's very important for every young woman to know about this problem. It's extremely important. Make sure don't miss this and don't forget to share it. Let's start. So preeclampsia or pregnancy induced hypertension is a problem where during pregnancy your high blood your blood pressure rises and there are signs of liver or kidney damage that occur in a woman after uh, 20th week of pregnancy 20 weeks of pregnancy right so it is rare but preeclampsia can also occur in a woman after delivering the baby right so if that happens it most often occurs within the 20, within 48 hours right that is called postpartum preeclampsia postpartum right so what are the causes of preeclampsia and what exactly happens what is the risk see preeclampsia if it happens it basically is the contraction of the blood vessels going to the placenta and placenta is the main source of nutrition to the baby from you and this can actually hamper the nutrition going to the baby and cause problems in a long time right so the exact cause of preeclampsia to be frankly cannot be pinpointed but it occurs in seven to three percent of pregnancy and there are so many conditions which actually which factors which can lead to preeclampsia right First of all, uh, there is there might be a blood vessel problem. Your diet may be an issue. Your genes may be an issue. You have might have autoimmune disease, which might be the issue and which might predispose you to preeclampsia. Other risk factors like if you're having a first pregnancy, if you have a past history of preeclampsia, if you have multiple pregnancy, a family history of preeclampsia in your family, if you have obesity, if you are getting pregnant. Uh, after the age of 35 or if you have a history of diabetes kidney disease or high blood pressure then you have high chances of preeclampsia now what are the symptoms most often remember women who have preeclampsia do not feel sick they don't feel sick but symptoms can happen and symptoms include just swelling of the hands face and eyes that is edema right swelling in your hands face and eyes and sudden weight gain over one to two days for more than two pounds for more than a kg one kg over maybe uh, suddenly right or maybe two k one kg two kgs over a week right you have to know that some swelling on the feet and ankles is absolutely normal during pregnancy but not in the hands and face and eyes right in the feet it's normal because your uterus heavy uterus is pressing on the in inferior vena cava the blood vessels coming uh, which are bringing the blood from your uh, legs and because of that pressure some swelling can happen in your ankles and feet but not in your hands face and eyes right so that's what you need to look for and if the symptoms persist then severe cases of preeclampsia can have headaches which will not go away or become worse they can have trouble breathing they can have a belly pain on the right side below the ribs and they might have pain on the shoulder they might confuse it with heartburn gallbladder or stomach pain or even some people can get confused that it is the baby who is kicking right and they might have urinary problems where you might not urinate very often they might get nausea and vomiting which is actually a very worrisome sign in this later stage of pregnancy then they can have vision vision changes they can have temporary blindness flashes wire lights 
uh, spot sensitivity to lights they can have blurry vision right high blood pressure can be very tricky they can even have light headedness or faint sometimes so pre eclampsia severe pre eclampsia severe pregnancy induced hypertension is not good at all so how it is diagnosed see number one obviously when you go to a doctor your physical examination history is taken and your blood pressure is taken and most often the blood pressure is higher than 140 by 90 140 systolic diastolic 90 swelling can be seen in your hands and face right remember leg swelling can be normal weight gain can be seen then blood and urine tests are done blood tests uh, we can we can see what 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 we do what we see in urine we check for proteins right in uh, we can see liver enzymes for liver damage if you have proteins in urea in in urine protein urea or higher liver liver enzymes then it might be an indication of internal liver and kidney damage platelet count can be low yeah, and creatine level creatinine level may go high again signifying kidney damage then tests can also be done to see how your how well your blood clots and obviously you need to monitor your baby's health right baby's health can be monitored by pregnancy ultrasound non-stress tests and uh, these tests will actually help along with other tests to decide whether your baby needs to be delivered right away or not yes if pregnancy induced hypertension is getting out of control the best option is to get the baby out if it's safe for both of them right so a woman who has had a low blood pressure in the start of pregnancy followed by a significant rise of blood pressure needs to be watched very closely for the signs of preeclampsia it's very important lastly what is the treatment preeclampsia often resolves after the baby is born right and the placenta is delivered so that is one thing but it may persist even after uh, even uh, it may persist or even begin after delivery like i said before so that is one possibility but mostly it just goes away after delivery so most often at 37 weeks right your baby is delivered right uh, because it's developed enough to be healthy outside the womb so if you have preeclampsia and you are 37 plus weeks you can just go for the delivery cesarean section or induced labor so your doctor will give you something to some medicines to trigger your labor or they, they might do a c-section right or if your baby is not fully developed in that case your doctor might give you some medicines or they can actually uh, manage they can actually help you manage your problems at home the frequent doctor visits will be done to check whether your baby is doing well or not uh, medicines will be given to lower your blood pressure if needed severe preeclampsia cases uh, can actually go down very quickly that changes the uh, severity can change very quickly and you very you very much need regular follow-ups right so complete blood uh, complete bed rest is actually no longer no longer recommended in such cases uh, but sometime a pregnant woman with preeclampsia is ad admitted to the hospital and this will allow the doctors to keep a keen watch on the baby and the mother more closely right in the hospital they monitor your mother baby's heart rate their uh, activity medicines are given to control the blood pressure and prevent other complications of preeclampsia including scissors right yes you can get scissors which which will actually be a part of eclampsia right the next complication of this problem then uh, sometimes steroid injections are given for uh, pregnancies which are under 34 weeks of gestation to help speed up the development of baby's lungs so that the baby can actually uh, be delivered right so you and your doctor have to be in very close sync during this time to actually manage your baby and uh, a lot of things matter how close you are from your date how uh, how much severity is there of preeclampsia what is your blood pressure how well is the baby doing in the womb right obviously your baby must be delivered if there is uh, any sign of severe preeclampsia like if your tests show that your baby is not growing well or not getting enough blood or oxygen is under distress right if your or even if your blood pressure is 
your your bottom number the diastolic blood pressure is higher than 110 110 mm of hg or uh, greater than 100 mm of hg consistently for more than 24 hours uh, if you have abnormal liver function tests, abnormal headaches, a lot, a lot of pain, seizures, right? That is a sign of eclampsia. If you have fluid building in the lungs, in the mother's lungs, that can be a sign of breathing difficulty, right? And the low platelet count of bleeding or urine or low urine output, all these are signs that it's time to get the baby out as soon as possible. Remember, uh, this condition can only be managed if you get help at a proper time so perinatal prenatal visits are very important regularly health checkups during pregnancy is very very important right so this is all about uh, preeclampsia i hope this video is helpful right and uh, don't forget to share this video i'm dr paramjeet you're watching dr education stay connected and stay healthy